Oh my gosh, wow. Hi. Hey. <laughs> We're back. Okay. That just started so, that was so weird. I don't know if you guys ever know, like, like when you start a video and it's like, oh, the cameras are rolling. Oh my gosh. And I haven't done this in a while, but nonetheless, here we are. We're back again for another episode of Gorda. Oh my gosh. And our special guest is none other than Royal Marquis. Hello. <laughs> this man is so talented. Royal is a singer, songwriter, producer, and curator based in Greensboro, North Carolina, soon to be worldwide, okay? <laughs> so let's get to know him better in this episode of Golden Hour. So, like, this has been kind of a long time in the making. Very, Like, very. when I first started in 2020, we kind of talked about this, like, ooh! So the in-person yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. You gotta be on here, so... We're finally later. making it right. We're finally <laughs> making it But you happen. know divine timing is real. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Wow. Where do we even start? I'm just so right. freaking excited just because like to be back doing this and then the interview is with you, someone who I've just like, I just admire you so much. I admire like your work ethic and just your artistry all Thank together, you. you know, and and just like beaming with excitement. So me too. I'm like trying to contain. <laughs> I it know. And be, like, so professional right now. But I'm just <laughs> no, you can let loose. It's fine. It's Real. Fine. I'm trying Real. to like get my nerves out because I'm like, oh. What did they say? What did they say? This is a safe space. <laughs> right. This, this is a safe space. space. <laughs> you just came back from LA. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Uh, um, Real. Cause um. Well, me and my best friend, Matthew, who's in the, who's behind the camera, we went, and we just wanted to go spend some time with Barry, mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah. And we had just wanted to go kick him with him, because we plan to move there soon. Okay. But, you know, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just went there, kicked with Barry, went to the studio a little bit. Okay. It was really cool, recording in LA for the first time was great. Yeah. Like, I went, I don't know, I feel like being in a place like LA, you have so much more it's like almost a must to have like more discipline in mm -hmm. how you operate. Like the guy told me he was like, "Yo, the sessions at like 8 a.m." and I was like, "You know, <laughs> you know," I was like, "I'm not Ooh. used to that." But I got my ass up at 7 a.m. Yeah. and I was at that studio yeah. at 8. <laughs> yeah. And I was in there till like, you know, one o'clock. And I just, I don't know, just the being there, knowing you feel like you're working towards something bigger, yeah. like it just made me wanna work yeah. hard and yeah the whole time I was there we was making music and yeah. you know manifesting new things yeah so so does Barry live there in yeah. LA now he lives oh in that's LA super now. cool yep that's super cool okay yeah, he made us feel really at home there yeah how long has he been there um August of last year okay that's yeah. really dope it's been a minute you were in uh New World an mm -hmm. alternative band yeah I, I call I, us like, alternative like, yeah. Time, yeah 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 and you guys were like on the rise for like a while, you know, right like, while. yeah, like super fast too. And um, everyone was really excited to see, you know, everything. And you guys aren't a band anymore. You know. So, you know, shit happens. You know. I'm just, I would like to know, like, what did you take away from um, being a part of a, like a collective and like, you know, working with others? Cause you guys, mm -hmm. y'all were working. Yeah, for sure. Still, regardless of uh, you know us all going our separate ways mm -hmm. it was more so anyway just because we all needed at the time we like grouped up mm -hmm. we were all still on separate journeys like the initial i can tell you the initial way we linked up it was for my birthday of last year mm -hmm. and initially we were all gonna like i was trying to call like five different friends who've never met yeah on a trip just to see like you know the chemistry but i wanted to make songs for like my album mm -hmm. and when we all got there i noticed our chemistry just worked well yeah. as a group and i was like wait a minute this is not about me <laughs> like you know it, yeah. it, it turned out really good but um i think everyone was still on individual journeys so right. it wasn't a plan to become a group so okay. you know everyone kind of put in their personal music and stuff to the side to make this group thing happen it was a, it was pressuring for all of us but i think you know as far as what i took away from it it just showed me how to work harder and work faster. Yeah. Honestly. Um, okay. And still love all of them. Yeah. Still love all of them. I just came back from seeing Barry. Still yeah. love Kyla. Yeah. Still love Andy. So, you know. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, you know, you got to go through certain things to, like, help you on your journey. Because I know, yeah. like, before you guys kind of, like, started going, like, super um, in, 
you were working on an album for yourself, an individual album. Mm-hmm. And so since being in the group, how have you like dived back into working on your your individual project? Well, first of all, great question. Yeah. Um, during the time in the group, I just remember going through a period where when I would write mm-hmm. and stuff like that, I'd write in the form of like, you know, songs for the group. Because when you're like singing with like two other people, mm. you're like thinking, okay, what can I sing? What can this person? You know, mm. you kind of like sep- you already compartmentalize a song yeah so I think just diving back in my own bag was just taking experiences that I didn't write about before because I hadn't experienced them yet Mm -hmm. and you know just going through the time of the group you know I was also just like going different places I was living somewhere else Mm -hmm. that I don't live now like you know my whole emotional makeup changed yeah so just I think it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be Mm -hmm. it wasn't hard at all but I think you know story wise and the things I talk about and themes it changed drastically just Mm. because you know I mean even though it wasn't like a horrible you know exit or anything Mm -hmm. just it felt bittersweet anyway so you know just like talking about the longing for that because there was a togetherness that I did love being a part of the group Mm -hmm. um but yeah just diving back in my own stuff it was kind of easy because because that was the mission from the very beginning you know so I I never lose sight of that yeah yeah, it was kind of easy. Good. So did you, like, already have stuff planned out for your album and you, like, picked up where you left off? Yes. Or? yes. Okay. It was very much... Because I started my album, honestly, like, honestly, the first record for the album that I knew was going to, like, was Free Yourself. Yeah. And I did that in 2012. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh. <laughs> Free Yourself is... If you haven't heard it, first of all, you need to go download that, like, right now. Yeah. When I say right now, I mean right now. Like right now, right that now. is still that is a timeless piece. Like thank you. That will last forever. Thank you. For real. You and know that's not something that's like you know easy to do. Like that is. You know that's I was, it. I was literally <laughs> just talking to Matthew a couple of weeks ago. I was like, will they make the album? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I love the song, so I'm gonna do my best. Like even if it means tweaking some of the arrangements for like okay. an album version just to okay yeah because i don't know i do love that song and like i was saying just to kind of answer the question yeah. and still dive into that like that was the first record for that album i completed and that okay. was 2020 right so i've been had my mind on this yeah. you know so taking a break from it honestly mm-hmm. helped because i had experienced like writer's block yeah. for a little while too so you know picking back up it was like ooh, okay now we can yeah. like say this now our vocabulary okay expanded okay and, you know. But even still, like, even the writing on For Yourself was, it was beautiful. Um, Thank you. I vote, put it on an album. Because I listen to the, like, album sequence in my notes, like, every single day. Okay. Like, I, it's, <laughs> no, literally, like, I could be going on a walk and I'm like, yeah. okay, play the album from yeah. track one. It's For Yourself number one, it's mm-hmm. For Yourself here. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. like, you know. That's so I, important. I'm so glad that you do that because I hate when artists, like, sequence it's like the sequence is fucked up i'm like oh yeah this is ruining the moment <laughs> yeah no it. and i and i honestly i'm stuck between free stuff being like the intro or outro because it just doesn't feel like a middle of the song album because of the other songs that yeah. i'm like working on so i'm like okay this has to either go here there or it's yeah. not on here at all yeah. and like you know i'm i'm fighting that fight right now yeah <laughs> but i want to keep it i'm gonna keep it yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do it for you do it for yourself but right you know what was the process like when you uh co-directed or directed um the video for free yourself did you well yeah no i directed that. Yeah, yeah yeah okay okay so okay uh that video is such an interesting experience to reflect on because it took months to like curate the vision yeah i was finishing the song at the same time i was starting to put the video together oh which was kind of you know at the time it's 18 year old me just trying to like see something yeah you know so some you know 22 year old me's mind is like why the hell is the song not mixing massive (laughs) but you try to shift the video yeah but like (laughs) i don't know i had a vision and i was sticking to it by any means yeah so i think directing that video was just a learning lesson Mm -hmm. overall because I don't ever bring this up, but now it's perfect time to bring it up. Yeah. So there were like 
two scenes in that video that did not make it, but they were the most pivotal scenes of that video. And when I say, like, I love the video and I love when people love it. Yeah. But it's just like a Bitter little sweet. piece of my yeah. heart that's just like missing. Ugh. Cause like, cause you know I, what it could have been. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also that that is a part of the lesson too. Not always worrying about what could have been, but what is, you know? And people that's appreciating huge. that. So I had to really humble myself, even though I feel that way about it. You know, it's just a yeah. little, my own little note on it. Yeah. Um, directing it was great. Cause uh -huh. you know, we rehearsed it for months. Um, I had like, you know, I was in my little like Melina Masuka yes. Solange pocket, oh. you know, so I was just like really, yeah. I was like, no, we're going to see it through. Like right. we do a takeover again. And uh, shout out to Braxton who shot it. Cause yeah. That's, that's my brother now. I was like, uh-uh, got to do it again. Yeah. Got to do it again. And it just like, <laughs> you know, being 18, mm -hmm. trying to like see that, you know, shit right. through, it's like, who this boy think he is telling everybody to do it again? You better be grateful <laughs> with the shots you got, you know? I yeah. don't oh, know. It, it challenges you to bring the best out of yourself, though. Yeah. I think that um, that's something, like, really huge that you just touched on for, like, any type of artist, any creative. Like, not holding so strong or tightly to an idea because mm -hmm. things change constantly and you have to time. be able to pivot. You have to be able to, like, adapt and just be extremely agile, you know, yeah. with your creativity and with your vision because things aren't going to always go exactly how you plan it. And, yeah. you know, things could actually be better, you know. Yeah, and so. I, but don't beat yourself up if you find yourself being stuck on, you know, a certain version of an idea because mm -hmm. sometimes it's a really thin line between, like, you know, you having an idea that you know is great yeah and you wanting to see it through and then you know things might have to be changed to make that same idea great and mm -hmm. then a person having an idea and then everyone's in their ear telling them to change it mm -hmm. because they think it could be different and then you change it because of that mm. you know yeah Cause some people will be in your ear and be like well things have to change but it's only them who thinks right that thing has to right, change. right it's not as if that idea can't be changed mm -hmm. or it can't stay the same mm -hmm. you know I don't want to confuse it's you. Kind of like stay true to yeah, your stay, stay true, true to the way. vision yeah, regardless, because yeah. you know. Be open, but stay true. Yeah. Because for example, like during the time of coming up with the idea for the video for yourself, mm -hmm. somebody was like, "Well, how how are you going to be able to do that? How are you going to be able to do that?" And right. I'm like, "Exactly how I'm about to do it." Because people have never seen it. People, yeah. you know, they're not in your brain. So. And, and, and that's the thing too. Sometimes listening to people who haven't even done an ounce of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Or what your... I'm looking at the camera, too, because I want to just tell you yeah. who's watching. Like, listening to people who haven't done what you've done ten times over or aren't even there, yeah. tune them out. For real. <laughs> tune them out. For real, because you see the vision. Yeah. And, it was placed in your heart, but you know? also trust the people who, are, who do have your best interests. Right. Who are telling you, hey, you might be holding on to this one version of this thing and you're limiting what the vision could be yeah it's a thin line, so just you know yeah trust the what trust the right people that's facts but yeah that's facts yeah so let's kind of backtrack a bit okay. and talk about how you even got into um music what was that like what was, real yeah so do you <laughs> want like the short version or more of like the interviewee version i want the real version okay so <laughs> I was seven years old, and the very first song I ever remember singing was Yesterday by Mary Mary. Mm. Do you know that? Or, or Heaven by Mary Mary too? Heaven? I, uh, uh, I got to get yeah, myself yeah, so together, together cause I got some place to go. And I'm praying when I get there, I see everyone I know. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Do you want to go? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like that? No, because my mom, that's honestly still one of my favorite memories. Because like my mom used to make me like, go and sing that song. Listen. No, it's so crazy because you just unlocked a memory of mine. Like, I went to this old, it was an old timey church. Mm -hmm. And, like, my cousins, we would get up there and sing that song. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, That's so my wild. mom really used to, like, because I remember I used to be very timid when mm -hmm. I was younger wanting to sing. And she used to make me sing it over and over to break <laughs> out of that shell. And it used okay, to, like, yeah. I remember one time she made me sing it for, like, my grandma and my aunt. And I just knew my 
my grandma was very much like, I knew she was going to be honest. Yeah. And I didn't know if she didn't, like, if she was going to say, he can't sing or something like that. So, like, she made me sing. It was like a family reunion. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, singing. I almost started, like, crying. And my grandma was like, you singing that song, oh. baby. And I just remember, like, that. Yeah. Like, I will never forget that moment. Like, that moment really made me think, okay, you can do this. Yeah. And then, you know, years passed by just, like, singing a song here and there. Mm -hmm. And I'd say around, like... 13, I started to study, like, Beyonce performances. Okay. And Beyonce always has a thing for, like, live arrangements, always making sure, like, the live version of the song is better than the actual song. Mm. So when I would watch those quite often, I would just, like, watch her trying to, like, learn how she just delivers a powerful performance yeah. and just, like, how it can leave yeah. you touched. So I would always find myself, you know, singing, like, a lot of Beyonce songs, lots of Rihanna songs. And then the older I got, the more I started like focusing on like how to vocally, you know, yeah. really get there. I'm, I'm taking you on the journey from yeah, vocals no. to- Yeah, I love it, you yeah. Know? So around like 14, 15, just like, okay, how can I really be a singer? Like, mm -hmm. how can I sing my mm -hmm. ass off? Like, sing niggas under a table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Around 16, going on 17, was when I met an old friend who just showed me how to produce music. Oh, cool. And around that time, you know, I'm a rookie finding my sound. Yeah, so I was yeah. just doing, doing shit, honestly. Right. But the feeling, I think one of my first times, right, was when I hung out with friends and they had a band rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And we went to this church and, like, it was at night. And they were just freestyling. So I was like, can I get on the mic? Yeah. And, like, you know, when you're, like, you don't sing for everyone often. You're like feeling like you're breaking through yeah. this like big wall. So I just remember singing for the friends, yeah. and they were like, "Yo, you can, you right. can do this." So then someone was just like, "Make a song," mm -hmm. and then I just like you know started doing that. And then I of course self doubt's real. Yeah. So from about 16 to 18, I started to just write songs mm -hmm. and started to like you know work on my sound. Mm -hmm. And then 19. Well, 18 going on 19 came, and that's like 2020, yeah. pandemic hit, stuck in the house, and I don't know, I got on GarageBand, mm -hmm. and yeah. for yourself became, Wow. you know? It's so wild that you made that on GarageBand. Yeah, I started on GarageBand, and then my homie John Blue, who produced the drums, mm -hmm. I reached out to him, because he was just a YouTube producer, but okay. I didn't, for me, I never have found a good tight beat. Until like a week ago. I don't know what the key is to find either. a good time beat, but I don't when have that I touch. When I say I look and I try to find every niche artist possible to find like, Literally. You know, it's like you got to type in specific artists and still those don't even hit like you think they would. I try to find every niche artist who has like the most unique kind of production to see if they could get and, anywhere And it close. just never no. works until... Last week, okay. I found a good little beat, and I think it'll be one of the Lucy's I put out. Okay. So, yeah, you know, because I've always wanted to find a tight beat where I could just record over it and put it out, and not right. Because I all my songs that you'll probably ever hear from me mm -hmm. are songs that were produced from like the ground up. Okay. Like it's very rare that you'll, except for this one song, I'm probably yeah, gonna put yeah. out soon. It's very rare that you'll ever hear me on a beat that mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. was already done. Because I don't know, I never had luck finding good yeah. tight beats. So that's what made me also go into an album mode really early on was mm. just like well nobody's sending you beats so you gotta you gotta Figure find it the out. good shit yeah. you know yeah but yeah I know that you're like really big on learning about like um just like the business side of everything yeah, too for sure. so one I want to ask why is that important to you and two also how do you balance the business side and the creative side cause okay. that can get real <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that can over one can overpower the other, and they yeah, have to be a balance. So. It surely can. Um, well, around the time I started studying um, Beyonce's like live performances, mm -hmm. which was when I was like 13, mm -hmm. I started to just do random things. And my mom is my witness. I would randomly go to my mom and I'd be like, Mom, did you know the Greensboro Coliseum has a capacity of 23,500? And do you know that in order to sell this venue out, you have to have this amount of tickets that can sell this much? Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. So mm -hmm. just like learning those things and like seeing artists who went on tour and who came to Greensboro and how much they, uh, how much the gross versus like, you know, the revenue, just 
learning random little things. I don't know. I've always found myself uh, in love with that. Yeah. Because, you know, the music industry is real. And it's so many layers than just, you know, wanting a record deal. When you sign that record deal, what clauses are in there? Right. You know? Right. But I guess to answer the first question before we go into that mm-hmm. is um, I find it important because, well, I distribute my music through Halo Radio, which is my own entertainment company. Yeah. And I want to build Halo Radio throughout the years. Like, mm-hmm. even though I'm in, like, my debut album era right now, I want to forever be able to make sure I can stand on that. Right. And always be able to have my own thing to come back to. Because I think when you put too much trust into other things that are set up to not necessarily be on your side, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. dealing with, like, mm-hmm. DSPs mm-hmm. and when you're signed to labels mm-hmm. and stuff. Things are good, and sometimes things aren't. Yeah. And you got to always make sure you have something to count on. Yeah. So, yeah. I also just use Halo Radio as my way of developing myself right. and other artists to yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, just the business is important to know because mm-hmm. you want to know how... You want to know your specific thing that you want to do. Right. Because a lot of people think sometimes, oh, I want to be an artist. Oh, I yeah. want to do this. So, I just want to go put out music and it's like okay well do you know that you don't have to sign to a label yeah you do know if you work with this independent distribution company right. and you have your own LLC under your artist name you can make all the money from your song yeah learn about publishing right. learn about publishing <laughs> <laughs> read yes. your contracts you no, know what I'm saying real. because like I mean the, the music industry is notorious for being grimy and making artists sign bad deals so we've heard it all you know you never want to be in that position where anyone can tell you something about your artistry or how much Mm -hmm. you're worth or you know whatever it is like you want to be able to sit in those rooms and actually have a conversation rather than telling you okay this is what it is and this is how it's gonna be are you down you know what 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 would suck is when you go into a boardroom and they tell you well this is your budget for this and you cannot do this until you make this back. Mm-hmm. And you can't drop another record until you do this and da 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 But when you're independent and you have your own way of, you know, yeah. your own little system, you're like, well, sure, I don't have a million dollar budget that, you know, Universal could right. give me. But I have this budget and I can put out this record as many times as I want. Mm-hmm. And Or say you do work with a major label, but you know your stuff. Yeah. I posted this the other day mm-hmm. where you can sign a deal off of a song but exclude your back catalog Ooh, so that you can always push that. your older music and remarket it to the newer audience mm. you gain. It's so many ways to like, you know, navigate. And I think just today's generation of artists, I think, because the fame comes fast mm-hmm. and the numbers come fast, mm-hmm. nobody, you know, people don't have the patience to read a contract or, yeah. or even learn about it. Yeah. And I think just as much Showing people that it's something important to know one by one. Mm-hmm. You know, each one teach one, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. For sure. And you're definitely a big advocate for that. Like, you, you talk for about sure. stuff like that on your story all the yeah. time. Yeah. I, I just, because I just feel like if we all, you know, I know people, I know some of you guys in real life. Mm-hmm. Like, I know what some of my friends give to their mm-hmm. art. Mm-hmm. And I know it's a little blood, sweat, and fucking mm-hmm. tears. And I think doing that. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> blood, sweat, and fucking tears. And, like, doing that and having it be controlled in any way shape or form or being restricted it does something to you mm-hmm. and i and i i would hate for somebody who's you know so innocent mm-hmm. and like just put their all in this one thing and they're so eager to like right. show it yeah. and then they show it to the wrong person and then like you know all hope for that thing just goes away you know it sucks yeah. cuz you've heard those stories on how people went to said big artist don't want to say names but you know go to this big artist and they want to sign to them and <laughs> yeah, then suddenly yeah. they sign them one single out they shelve them mm. there's nothing mm-hmm. worse than that you know mm-hmm. so that's nice read your contracts you know hit me yeah. up you know <laughs> I'm taking consultations <laughs> <laughs> I love it no you should though you know you definitely should okay <laughs> um so how do you balance the business and the create the creative process um allowing one process to complete before the other mm. so for example that makes so much sense yeah. like right now i'm focused on completing the album okay granted I do write out parts of my marketing, you know, yeah. all that. Yeah, you don't want to forget it. Sometimes things happen spontaneously. You get yeah. ideas spontaneously. And you got to work you gotta... simultaneously at 
at some point you have to work simultaneously. Right, right. But I will say, allowing yourself to complete the music first. Yeah. Because that's something even my peers have had to tell me, hey, slow down. Mm -hmm. Just complete this first, Mm -hmm. do this first, you know. Mm -hmm. But I definitely recommend completing the songs and then knowing, okay, what's your lead single? Yeah. What's your promotional single? Mm. When the album's out, what's the single you're going to put out with a video on the day of the album Mm. drop? Well, you know, Mm -hmm. thinking about those things and also Mm. a budget. Right. You know, even if you ain't got much, if your budget's $500, $500, how are we going to divide $100 five ways? Yeah. You know, yeah. really, yeah. <laughs> really like, you know, finding as many unique ways to go about it. But I think balancing it is just allowing yourself to complete the music. Right. We in we in nature, clearly. <laughs> you <Okay>. know. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely allowing yourself to complete the music. Yeah. And then once that's done, allow yourself to have fun. Like, for example, yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't shot a video in a while. And thinking about the next singles video is like oh damn I didn't spent yeah. like months on this song and I've <laughs> held it for like a year damn yeah. I forgot what it felt like but mm-hmm. you know I know I can do it because mm-hmm. I did it before right. and I think also now my creativity is in another place so you know balancing it by creating the thing and yeah. then going in on it yeah being the character for the song that's right. the fun part to me yeah you know. that that sounds fun I definitely want to dive into the music scene and, you know, just express my, my artistry in that way. Cause, Go for it. You know? I, and I think also that's the thing I want to bring up. This is just kind of random. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like this is a thing I feel 50-50 on when people are like, oh, I want to, like, go into music. Yeah. And, like, you know, those are the, they're the overly passionate music lovers who are yeah. like, people just want to make music just to get money and like you yeah, know yeah, yeah. but there are also some people mm-hmm. who have held a passion for so so long for real. and have silenced it and hidden it and like it's their yes. time you know what I'm saying yes. so sometimes it's not people who just want to yeah. make a damn song because they saw somebody else sometimes they've held that gift in longer than that damn person made that song that is facts you that know? is facts like singing is something that I've always wanted to do like I was singing when I started talking you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like it's definitely something that's deeply rooted and for me it's not about money it's not about fame it's about expressing myself you know like I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't exactly if I didn't express that and I was actually on live earlier and I was saying like that's one of the reasons why I started golden hour because i wasn't expressing myself i was hindering my creativity Mm -hmm. and i wanted to hear from other creatives i wanted to like just get to know you know what their process was like and to inspire me and i want to inspire other people you know so i think also when it comes to like the older we get and the more we like hold our gifts yeah it eats at you. Oh, yeah. It's like, because you Cause know. Because it's something you, you're supposed to do. Yeah. Because, like, when you're younger, it's like, oh, okay, like, oh, you know, sometimes you living at your parents' house or yep. something like that. It's some kind of circumstantial limitation. Yeah, yeah. And then once that is over, it's like, well, it's all on you. Mm hmm. And, like. And even that, though, it's always been on you. Even through yeah. those circumstances, like, you kind of choose to place that weight on those things. Like, yeah, it could be more challenging yeah. in those circumstances, but you're still like choosing to hold that circumstance as a uh, obstacle. You know? Yeah, it's like you're the one making that yeah. obstacle. It's yeah. not that it's in yeah. place to be the obstacle, but but at the same time, <laughs> when you've never been shown that you're capable, that's facts. You know, that is it, facts. Yeah. you got to prove to yourself. And but sometimes, in order to be able to prove that thing to yourself, sometimes it does take a friend. Being like, you know, mm-hmm. I do believe in you. Mm-hmm. You know, or, you should be doing that thing. Yeah, like or, or even do. when a friend who doesn't even know, for example, even when a friend who doesn't know you, like, in that way, but they're just eager to see what you're doing. Yeah, like, the yeah. other day I went to Starbucks, and somebody had, like, somebody was like, hey, yo, Royal, like, I follow you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, are you going to drop new music soon? Mm. And I was like, damn, I am. But, like, the fact that you asked yes, just like, reminded yeah. me, like, oh, wow. Put a fire are, under my ass. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and yeah. sometimes you need that. You do, you absolutely do. You absolutely do. We get do. comfortable in our own like self doubt, mm-hmm. and it can just be like, well, uh, I'm just this, I'm inadequate. You telling yourself this the whole time, the whole time somebody's anticipating, yeah, the moment you're gonna do something else. Mm. So you know, it was a humbling yeah. moment. Yeah, but yeah, 
I didn't want to get too like. No, you good? You good? <laughs> okay, so we're closing things out. Okay. But I have the game. We're not really strangers. Okay. I freaking love this game, and like you know, a lot of people don't be wanting to play it with me. So I'm gonna just bring it on here. Well, I'm ready for to episodes. Play. For episodes. So today. let's do it. <laughs> so I picked out. I actually picked out three. <clears throat> we can play off camera one okay. day, but I picked three questions that I felt like you know would be cool. Okay. So. Which one do I want to ask first? Okay. What are you more afraid of? Failure or success? And why? Mm. Probably failure. Mm -hmm. But not because of who might think I'm a failure, but because of myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Success. Sure, I'm afraid of it. But will I know how to balance it? Yeah. You, I mean, oh, yeah, with a little like confusion. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's new. It'll yeah, it'll be, be new. new yeah. But I definitely think failure just because I, me experiencing failure, which God forbid, I know it won't happen, but you know, <laughs> yeah, speaking, on like a grand level, you mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, failure would just be me suppressing my God given gifts and, yes. you know, never allowing myself to, yes. That would probably kill me. Yes, so. I that I would answer the question the exact same way. Yeah, like, failure for sure because <laughs> probably failure. Yeah, because yeah. success is one thing. Like, hey, you know, you get at least you did of, it. Yeah, you, you know? know. Yeah, even if you did that, what she said, you hit that bitch in them. You hit that little one thing. <laughs> like, even if you hit that yeah. little one thing, you still experience success. So you know, right? But okay. yeah, I'd say uh, failure. Okay, I'm gonna say that one last. Okay, how oh, are okay. you really? How are you really? Like really, not oh, okay. <laughs> How are you really? And yeah, uh, I can answer it too. You know, you don't have to be on the hot seat. I mean, no. Um, <laughs> I'm good. I feel like I'm in a blank canvas era because mm -hmm. I know I'm finishing an album that I've held for like years. Yeah. So there's a level of detachment that I'm experiencing okay. with previous songs. Yeah, yeah. But I know I have to put them out because I'm right, like, right, okay. Right. Like, I just finished a single that, like, literally was in the studio yesterday, mm -hmm. like, doing some little tweaks on the single. And I'm like, oh, okay. I sat with this song since the end of 2021. Oh, shit. It's about to come out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Do I... Am I, like, in love with this song the way I was <laughs> when I first found it? No. But mm -hmm. it's because I've also been doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know this has to happen. Like, you know, separating the creativity from the right, business part. Right, right, it's like, right. I'm looking at it like, okay this is my single like okay yeah so it, it's i'm in a blank canvas right now i like how you describe that though that's a that's a yeah. beautiful place to be honestly yeah just starting new yeah and not having any uh previous tools of the past to kind of give me a hint of what this yeah. is gonna look like but literally just like starting new mm. That's beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that a little bit, you know. But, um, yeah, overall, I'm good. Like, mm -hmm. I got my happy weight. You know, <laughs> no, listen. I'm good. like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, it was funny because when we first started, we were, like, testing the audio. And I was like, ooh, another golden hour. Woo, woo, woo. Um, my arm's going to be jiggling this time because I'm getting a little weight since the last time. But, but like, like it's just, just like. I don't know. And I think also that, too, like, self-image. Yes. You can really fuck with how you are. Yes. Really. And, like, I don't know. That's also uh, been a thing. Like, I've just been yeah. looking in the mirror, like, being like, damn, you're fire. Yeah. Like, I love you. Yeah. Just how you are. Just like, how you, know, you are. You yeah. know, I still want to tweak a little thing. Like, work don't out get me a little wrong. bit. We can but, hop on the treadmill a little right. bit. But, but, I love you, know, you where you at, you know? We doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's so important to, like, remind yourself. Like, even though you want to improve, because there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. You gotta love yourself where you are, you know? Yeah, very much in my eat, pray, love era. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> For real, though. I love that. Okay. Uh, wait, did you want me to answer that question too? Yeah, why okay. not? How, How are am you I really? really? <laughs> um, I would say that I'm I'm good. Um, I'm I've been extremely busy, which is cool because I I'm not usually busy a lot a mm -hmm. lot of the time, and so it it feels like I'm doing things. I'm also yeah you know curating golden hour again which is like really fun for me mm -hmm. um i'm just gosh yeah i'm just trying to 
not put too much pressure on it and mm-hmm. have fun with my creativity Same. and just continue to you know pursue those things and like yeah. you know do do more with my creativity and um not necessarily beating myself up for all the time <laughs> i've wasted not doing anything um and yeah trust me we always time yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all do it we yeah. don't want to admit it but we yeah. definitely sometimes waste time being like am i not doing anything what am i supposed to be doing you're wasting time yeah. by doing that yeah and you know? also sometimes you have to go through periods of silence and stillness yes. to like realize oh no i am supposed to be doing this yeah i am you know i do truly love you know doing whatever that is that you were going to pursue or whatever you know like you mm-hmm. have to be still to remember and like come back to you know you and your essence so like that was can... definitely the last like half of 2022 mm-hmm. where like i thought it was going to be this one thing mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. it was like completely different silence yeah stillness is the yeah. vibes right now and right. you can try to fight it and it's going to be more stillness yeah. added on top heck yeah so yeah that's our last question Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's actually, it's like, no, no. (laughs) Finish the sentences. Strangers would describe me as blank. Only I know that I am blank. Woo. Um. Jesus. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, (laughs) the last sentence is probably hard. Yeah. But um, strangers would describe me as charismatic. Mm -hmm. Um, I... Would only describe me as oh my god, um, self conscious. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of people think, like, oh, you're just so like, you know, you're such a bad. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like yeah. all the time I'm analyzing my presence. What? Oh my god. <laughs> like, oh my god. Time. Everything. <coughs> Everything. Yeah. Like, I can go say hey to somebody, and I'm like, why did you say hey that little one way? Like, why that shit come out like that? You know, so yeah, I hope it lost no, myself. You. I definitely feel that. Well, this was great. I'm I so glad this. that we did this, finally. I am so glad. Yes. Yeah. I think, honestly, I don't know. I feel like doing, like, a whole interview was something I used to love the idea of, but when it came to actually doing it, I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> I actually have to be on camera and I have to like share myself. Like I'm a little That's, uncomfortable right you now. You know, but I honestly, you made me feel really safe and Good. like welcome. So it was, it, this was a breeze. Yay. I'm glad that but, you felt safe. Of course. So let everyone know, you know, where they can follow you and what you got going on next. When your album dropping, if you know that <sighs> yet, but you know, just share with them a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> my name is Royal Marquise. You can find me on Instagram, every social network at Royal Marquise, which is R-O-Y-A-L-M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. I have a new single coming out later this summer. It goes by the name of Distant Memory. And I have an album dropping prayerfully later this year. But even if the album doesn't come out later this year, first quarter 2024, no brainer. Okay? Just don't forget that. You're such a but star, yeah. bro. <laughs> I'm just watching. I'm like, I'm like, let me just let y'all know everything because I don't want to like always talk about it. So yeah, I want to like, yeah. if you want to figure it out, you can got you gotta yeah. come here. But yeah, definitely a couple more singles on the way. Expect multiple songs throughout this year. Multiple songs. Even yeah, if you get no album, you will have a catalog to stream. So yeah, shout out. So this was Golden Hour. I enjoyed this. My name is Royal Marquise. One more thing before we go. I Mm -hmm. want to plug my friends. They created these earrings. They go by the name of Truly Biobolico. Oh, shout out to her. She made those. Yes, they made these. So shop with them. I'll link them in the description and everything. So don't you worry. Oh, yeah. I'll be placing an order with them. Yes. (laughs) Don't forget I said it either. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, now it's really a wrap.